Do you even know what to do with money? Hello and welcome to the Durham Talents Channel. My name is Jesse Durham. For today's episode, we're just going to have a thought experiment where we question how we do things when it comes to our finances. Now, I don't mean to speak condescendingly, presumptuously, or in any form of a patronizing manner. I just want us to honestly introspect unplug from the the regular rigmarole of of life let's get off the hamster wheel for a second let's just consider do we know what to do with money i know what we do with money see you are where you are in that you are pursuing your career you're growing your family you're building a business if you're some specialist you're building your practice if you're a business owner you're 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 taking care of payroll and taxes and overhead and all those types of things if if you have some investments in most cases we're encouraged of course to just send our money to other folks we set it and forget it and 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 pretend and hope that in 20, 30, 40 years, it's going to be there for us. So that's what I want to evaluate is I know that we're going through life, but when it comes to uh, personal finance, uh, let's look at the things that are purported to us as conventional and normal and good. Okay, so let's just start from the very beginning. We all earn in whatever way we earn, whatever amount we earn. What happens what do we do without even thinking it? It'll normally happen on somebody's Thursday, somebody's Friday. Maybe it's once a week, maybe every other week, maybe once a month. I'm a former school teacher. That was once a month for me. So what do we do? What have we directed our income to do right out of the gate? I, I suppose I suppose I have this one particular thought in mind. And, and before then, we, we could actually be talking about taxes. Um, which which is a worthwhile part of this thought process. Okay, so if you've not heard me say it, let me go ahead and address taxes. Then I'm going to get to the real starting point that I had in mind. If you've never thought of it this way, look at what you're paying in taxes and just recognize that every Monday that you work, every Tuesday that you work, maybe even some of your Wednesday of every week is just to pay taxes. Okay, let's walk that out in a bigger picture so that I, I know that you're understanding what I'm saying, just in case you're hearing this for the first time. When you look at how much we pay in taxes, you need to realize that over the course of a year, January, February, March, maybe April, maybe May, several months are just to pay taxes, and then we're getting the rest. Okay, so suffice it to say, addressing tax issues in our life in an advantageous way behooves us okay any anywhere where we can be growing capital our money growing that with compound interest especially if we can find a place where that could happen uninterrupted don't worry i'm going to get to it and, and, and then of course in when when we think big picture about how one generation can leave tax free windfalls to the next generation that also behooves us okay so there is a bit on on taxation and i'm not a tax expert but we pay taxes so it's worthy to have a discussion about it now what i started to say for for our beginning for our launching point is we earn how we earn what happens to those earnings the very first thing we've we've addressed taxes but what happens is that don't we deposit that, maybe even automatically deposit that, directly deposit that somewhere? Where? Okay, you you know the banks, right? The credit unions, okay? Again, let me point out real quick, while we're going through this thought experiment of actually looking at how cash flows through our life, and it does flow, that entity that we send those direct deposits to is a business. That's not a nonprofit organization. That is a business. Okay, somebody owns that business, someone profits from that business. Your credit unions, our credit unions, your banks, our banks, all the ones you know. It's a business. 
So you mean to tell me that we are depositing all of our cash flows into somebody else's business before we ever touch it, before we ever use it for anything. I am asking us to question that step of the process of cash flowing through our lives. Okay, so we earn however we earn. We direct deposit it in this business. So I started by this whole episode by asking, do you even know what to do with money? I know we're told to do that. The The banks, of course, make it convenient for us. They, they, they have to have. Okay, let's talk about that business just for a second. That business has to have deposits. Has to have deposits. Okay, now for years, we have applied this concept of being our own banker. We talk about R. Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker, being the original source material that, that we read that you can access. If you've not read that book, I encourage you to read that book. For the better part of a decade, our household has not used a bank for financing the things of life. Okay, so I'm just trying to get us to question that whole premise of why are we putting all of our cash flows into someone else's business. Okay. And, and many of you folks, I know you're, you're going to be business owners. Think about how profitable that is for banks. And these banks and credit unions, they are earning 400%, 500%. I've seen as high as 1300% for the dollars that we're leaving in those banks. Okay. They are being very profitable, very profitable. So I'm asking us to question that part right there because, again, what we've done for the better part of a decade is systematically grow the amount, the percentage of our household cash flows that go into properly structured whole life policies with mutual companies that pay dividends in, into a privatized banking system. We started with one policy. We've grown it to six policies. So I'm really just trying to get us to evaluate this step of what do we do with our cash flows? Do we know what to do with money? Are we? Are I don't think that we are. I wasn't. I was not thinking that when I, because I'm thinking about my classroom when I was a teacher, when I was in law enforcement, I was thinking about the training that I was going to and, and the paperwork that I needed to take care of and all those types of things. We're just living life and, and we're going about things plugged into the matrix, hamster on a wheel so, so often. And we hardly ever uh, pull our heads out of the sand to, to breathe, it seems like. And Again, I can be just speaking of my own experience. I had an aha moment in 2015 when I read Becoming Your Own Banker, when I saw a presentation about how you could become your own banker. It changed my financial paradigm where I began to ask these things and question these things. So I just know that it's normal for us to be busy in our marriage and, and in parenting and in growing a household and pursuing our career or building our business, whatever it is that we're doing in life. We're more focused on our recreational activities. But but of course, for those of you that are tuning in to a financial uh, podcast and channel like this one, I, I know that you are considering these things with me. So do we even know what to do with money if we're putting 100% of what we're bringing home into somebody else's business before we even use it? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we're making another business very, very profitable. And then it puts us in a position of being beholden to that same business to see if they will allow us after we fill out all the paperwork, after we promise our firstborn and donate a kidney or whatever it is to try and apply for a loan or a, a line of credit for, for the things that we're going to do in life. And it's because from the get-go, we well, let's talk about these few. We did already talk about taxes. Taxes are already coming out of our incomes. I'm not saying don't pay taxes, but I'm saying notice and learn and take care of, take advantage of everything that you possibly can. Legally, of course. Okay, so taxation, we need to address that. The banking function, we talk about that here. That's 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 our cornerstone topic, the fact that you can become your own banker. And then, of course, something else that very commonly happens right out of our, our cash flows, right out of the gate, is investing. 
we're encouraged to put, and by many talking heads, the financial gurus of the world, we're encouraged to put a certain percentage of our income, you know, match this 401k here, fully fund your Roth IRAs there, do this in the stock market, do that in the other. And I'm not saying do or don't do. What I am trying to get us to think about is why? Why? Because everybody else is and does. Maybe they do. Why? When I ask why, I'm saying, do we want the results that we are seeing down the pipeline from folks that have followed that financial paradigm of not taking care of the tax advantages that are out there for us, abdicating the banking function to someone else and and putting ourselves in a position of being beholden to someone else for the banking function, and then taking a goodly percentage of our income and putting it at risk here or there. I mean, what do we know about those areas? What control do we have in those areas where we're told to put our capital? What what risk are we assuming? What exposure do we have? What guarantees are there or are not there? I mean, there are just so many questions to ask about where we're putting our money. And again, I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I am trying to get you to consider this one main point of who controls the banking function in your life, because everything that we do is financed. Taxes are financed. Investments are financed. Our households, our businesses, everything that we do is financed one way or another. And we're either using the commercial conventional banks. If they approve us, if they qualify us on their terms and conditions, we pay uh, interest out the wazoo uh, the collateral could be pulled out from under us, at any, the car, the home, whatever it happens to be. Okay, That's one way. The other way is you pay cash, and there's not an opportunity cost given to our capital. There's no recognition of, of EVA, economic value added, to our capital. And then when we are paying cash for something, ultimately, we liquidate that principle. So, so, so the principle is gone. It's not able to be recycled in in our own monetary system anymore. It's gone. And any interest that we could have earned on that is also lost and forfeited by paying cash for things. Well, this third option, of course, is becoming your own banker, owning, operating, controlling, and being profitable with your own privatized banking system, your own private monetary system. So I am trying to get us to consider why we do the things that we do with money right out of the gate. Why are our tax, are our tax, is our tax setting, you know, where it should be? Are we getting too much of a, of a refund? And again, I'm not a tax person. I'm just asking you to consider these things. Are we letting the government have too much of our capital over 12 years and then getting a refund of that money without interest after letting them use it for a year? Are you following my train of thought there? When you, when you know what's going on, you'll know what to do. That's a philosophy that I, I run our business by and, and, and that I've adopted in my personal life. When you know what's going on, you'll know what to do. I don't want to let the government that doesn't necessarily have a great track record on being on a budget and not running in a deficit and, and whatnot have the advantage of a good percentage of our income over the course of a year with no interest earned. No, thank you. Okay. Do I want to put a a percentage of of my income in all these different areas where it's supposed to be locked up for 20, 30, 40 years? And the guarantee, I mean, what's what's the guarantee that it won't go to zero? Well, there isn't one and it can. So I'm just asking us to consider all of these different things. So here, let me say, okay, because I've asked you to think about some things. Let me also point out that it's not even about so much of what we make. Like you haven't heard me talking about numbers. Some have greater cash flows. Some have lesser. Some that's active income. Some that's passive income. Okay, so that just looks like what it looks like for all of us. I will say that it's not nearly so important how much we make as how much we keep. Again, I've been talking about ways that money can, can be lost for sure due to taxation or inflation or exposure and risk to the marketplace, etc. Okay, so 
when we are our own banker, we have this private money monetary system where we are doing the things that we're going to do in life. Okay, our, our family is still taking vacations. We we still spend money. We still use money for the regular regular things of, of life. And and the big this so big and big and small. Okay, we're, we're we're using money, and we can do so from our own private monetary system. But because we have this system, we own and control this system, we can recapture that back into this system. We've, we've used our system from everything from uh, recapturing debt. That's a great place to start. Back in 2016, my wife and I, we had close to $50,000 worth of credit cards, student loans, car, all kinds of the all-American debt. Okay, And all the interest that was being paid out to someone else. Well, when we started this private money system, we were able to fund our money system first. That's that's where we put our dollars first, was in this private monetary system. We leveraged the cash value in our private system, a whole life policy that had been properly structured for this purpose, to be able to pay off those debts and then recapture. We were paying that debt back to ourselves now. So that interest that we'd been bleeding out to all the names that you would recognize of the world We were able to get that back into our own private monetary system now. So it's not so much about what you make. It is so much about what you can keep that's important. And when I describe to you some of the things that we've done and how this can be different when you have a privatized banking system, I'm not even saying that you would have to work harder. I'm not saying that you would have to give up control, that you would lose control of the situation. You wouldn't have to change your cash flows. You wouldn't have to take any additional risks. So so none of that has to be done to begin to own and operate the, your own private money system. So let's recognize this, that doing what we've done in the past has gotten us to where we are at now. And one of Nash's, R. Nelson Nash's key principles in implementing and understanding this infinite banking concept is to rethink your thinking. And I think that's what, you know, folks like you are, are doing when you listen to a financial podcast and, and channel like this is you're, you're open minded. You're looking to do better. You're you're open to rethinking what you think, you know, let iron sharpen iron. OK, but how we have thought and how we have done has gotten us to where we're at now. And from here, moving forward, we need to recognize that time goes by either way. That's such an obvious, it's such a bald statement, but really time goes by either way. Like when I think back now, because I I can say that now that we've, we've had this private money system that we've been using for the things of life, paying property taxes, taking vacations, paying off debt and recapturing interest, all the things that we've done. And we've done a lot over the past going on nine years now. The the time has flown by. You you know this to be true. The what's that saying? The the days are long, but the years are short, or, or or vice versa. Time goes by quickly. You know those of you that are parents. I mean, just think back five years ago, ten years ago. It seems like such a short time. So the time is going to go by either way. I'm thinking of a call. I had, and this happens often enough, right? Is that I was on the phone this week with someone who is in their 60s and and they're they they they've been exposed to this idea of becoming your own banker and we're having a consultation call a free consultation call where I'm addressing their questions encouraging them to dive deeper into Nelson's book becoming your own banker but where they are is in their 60s and and they have not done anything in particular for for retirement. So even while I've said what I have about the 401ks and the IRAs, having a plan, I do believe this, having a plan is better than having no plan. But then again, when you know better, you can do better. And 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 regardless, here's and here's the light at the end of the tunnel, okay? It doesn't matter if you're in your 30s like I was when I saw infinite banking. Some people are much younger. Some people are much more mature, okay? And what we need to recognize is if a if a 30-year-old, a 50-year-old, and a 70-year-old go into a grocery store and they all have a dollar to spend on their groceries, they get to buy the same amount 
of stuff. Uh, they all get to spend their dollar. Okay, so we're talking about banking. You are where you are. No question that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, but the next best time is today. So if you're in your 30s today, like I was when I first saw this idea, or you're in your 60s or 70s, it, it doesn't matter. We're all still banking one way or another. I'm saying that you can do that for yourself. And, and when you do, you improve you improve your financial standing in, in so many ways, so many ways. And for those of us that are interested in creating legacy, when you walk that process out and you begin to see what that can look like for that second generation or that third and, and beyond all of it, passing on the education, passing on the tools, passing on the information, it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. So here, here's my encouragement on this particular idea of asking you, just provoking thought, just trying to provoke thought. Do you even know what to do with money? And I think a great starting point is to ask, are you addressing the, the, the five human problems that Nash talks about? See, Nash talks about we need to address Parkinson's law. See, most people just tend to spend all that they earn. I've been there. I've done that. Okay. Had a lot of fun. Um, but it doesn't allow you to get ahead. Okay. So Parkinson's law, the tendency to spend all that you earn. Willie Sutton's law. There are those that would like to take our money from us, whether legally or illegally. Okay. And then there is the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. I'm encouraging you to be in control, to be capitalizing, to be compounding your money. You can do it. I can help you. Then there is the arrival syndrome, the sense of, well, I know that, or I already know that. I'm already doing that. Just you've arrived. You can't learn anything else. You know it all. Okay. And then the last one of use it or lose it. Okay. We're, we're told, of course, to put our money in so many different places. And it's, and it's like tying your arm. It's like tying your arm to your body. Imagine tying your arm to your body, but the other arm is free. Well, give it 30 days. Which arm's going to be stronger? The one that you used or the ones you didn't use? The one that you used, of course. So I'm just encouraging you to address those five human issues in your life, those human problems. Parkinson's Law, Willie Sutton's Law, the Golden Rule, the Arrival Syndrome, use it or lose it. Address those things right, right off the bat. And then do some practical things. Do some practical things like check in with HR and see how much of your income that you could be experiencing over the course of 12 months is being taken out unnecessarily, if it is. I'm just encouraging you to learn more and talk with the appropriate professionals, okay, in that in those spaces. Reconsider why you're putting money here, there, or, or the other place. But ultimately, at the end of the day, recognize that everything is finance and that you could be financing things for yourself. You could be the one in control. You could be the one profitable. So I hope that this has been thought provoking for you. And if you'd like to have a conversation about the questions that you have or how to implement the infinite banking concept into your household or your business, your investments, then don't hesitate to contact us. You can reach us at www.durhamtalents.com. And this has been a great pleasure for me. I look forward to our next conversation. Have a great day. Take care. Man, it's been a while. It has been a while. As a matter of fact, some folks are going to see this beard and say, who is this Viking? <laughs> Look good, feel good, sound good, am good. I'm so good. Yeah, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes.